we had Nate Boyer on the show uh, a, a short time ago. I know you've talked about that Logan played a role in. Logan started. Inspiring you. Logan really started. So, so, so tell me yeah, about how, you, how we Susie, go from Logan to what you're doing his with His grandma, me. Susie, was working with vets down in Virginia. And they called and said, hey, we know you you know, you know, have these players. And, da, da, da. and it was really like, hey, what if we bring players to We're helping all these vets. And I was telling them what a lot of my friends were going through. So I started calling around the NFL and said, man, let's get somebody down there. We have this place. Uh, and I hadn't met met Susie's grandmother yet, I knew Kirsty and Logan, um, but it was amazing what she and everybody did down there in a place called Boulder Crest. And I said, if we can get somebody down, it, football-wise, and look, I know, and I first told Nate about it too, he's like, what, wait, it's not the, this isn't the same job, you can't put these together. They said, no, you can put it together, it's not the same job, but it's the same suck when the uniform comes off. And they both look up to each other. So I'm like, dude, let's put them together and let's get, you know, combat vets, they look up to pro athletes. Pro athletes look up to combat vets. Let's put them together, remind them what their greatest is. And had I not met Logan through all this, none of this would have happened. So first guy we did was a guy named Orrin O'Neill, played for the Raiders. He agreed. He was in a really bad place. I flew down there. It was, I think, like 11 combat vets and Orrin. He was the rookie of the year for the Raiders one year when Lane Kiffin was the head coach. He blew out his knee back um, and never played again. He was really, really angry and bitter. And I walked in there to uh, Oren. So this is really the first time we put them together. But we wanted to see if this is going to work out or not. Are they going to, are the vets going to be like, fine, that's fine. And the football player is going to be comfortable with the vets. And, but I walk in there and, and Oren's in there and I'm like, so what's wrong with you? And he's like, what do you mean? I said, well, what's wrong with you? Like, what's so messed up with you that are you, you know, pretty much suicidal? He said, man, football took my life, took my identity. I said, what happened? He said, man, I got hurt, herniated L4, L5, blew out his, his old knee. So like ACL, MCL, PCL, patella, everything. I said, never did my knee, but yeah, I ruptured L4, L5 three times, uh, L1, L2 twice, and herniated CT345. What else you got? And he goes, well, I this is, oh yeah, well, I dis dislocated my elbow and tore my, uh, my uh, bicep. He goes, what else you got? And he goes, well, nothing else. I said, well, man, I broke my ankle twice, woke up during the surgery, actually, when I was, uh, it was getting better for me. Tore my calf, tore this bicep, tore this shoulder, tore this labrum, had that. And he goes, what? I just broke my nose seven times. And he goes, man, you act like you're proud of it. I said, you're damn right I am. Absolutely. I'm proud of every scar I have because what else am I going to do? You got to be proud of your scars, man. I said, you got these injuries playing in the NFL. Little Oren probably would have been his dream. And if you told little Oren, you're going to blow out all this stuff, but you get to play in the NFL, he'd say, sign me up. Right? Perspective. So, perspective. Am I just supposed to weigh, change the way I think? I said, right now. Right now, Warren. Right freaking now. And he did. And it changed his life. We just had an MVP fundraiser a week ago and saw him down there. Looks amazing. Lost a ton of weight. He's doing incredible work now. Man, so proud of him. It's that perspective. For me, listen, do I wish I didn't break my nose seven times? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, it sucked. Do I wish I didn't wake up during surgery for my ankle? Absolutely. That was traumatic. So I wish it didn't happen, but I'm freaking proud of it. Every time I sit with you or anybody else, I walk in there and stuff, it's stuff I've overcome. My scars are my currency. My money is not my currency. My achievements aren't my currency. The stuff I've overcome, that's your currency. We all have scars. We don't all have the successes we may want, but we all have scars that we can lean into to build us up. When we walk in a room, have a little, more, a little bit more pride in ourselves. This is one of the reasons I was excited to talk to you because so many of our kids they feel pain, um, they feel there's a mental health crisis among yeah. young kids in particular. What's your message for someone who feels yeah. like, like they have pain yeah. and they feel like they're a victim and, they're, and, they, yeah. and they, they can't do anything? I've been asked the question, what's the best gift you can give your son? And I said, adversity. Greatest thing you could ever give him. Again, I went through 11 years to get me where I am and made me who I am. Nowadays, you transfer. You go to the transfer portal and you just transfer to another team if you don't like what's going on. You don't have the Michael Jordan story getting benched in, you know, in high school to make him who he is. That adversity makes us who we are. That makes us gangsters. That makes us fighters. It's the same with suicide now. People are just like, I'm not going through some out. And like, man, if you can go through this pain and get through the other side, that will lead to your dreams coming true. Why do you think we don't do, we don't do that with our kids the way we used to? I think we are afraid of how they're going to handle it. My own son, man, I'm just afraid because we're. They're controlled by the outside forces and their influences and so much, so many influences. And look, even like the suicide, I, I try to villainize suicide. And 
I've gone through it even with our vets this, because I'm like, hey, it's selfish. Look, like, it's not selfish, it's a mental illness. And it, I hear you. I'm just trying to villainize as much as I can. If you want to be mad at me, you can be mad. And for people who have mental illness, sometimes there's, it is, it's like, you know, you're dying by suicide. But a lot of times we confuse our problems for mental illness. And we're killing ourselves over problems, over money issues, business problems. And that to me, I say it's selfish. And I try and put that out because I want people to think about it, somebody else. Like, man, when you do that, you're leaving us with your problems. And you, your problems are dumb. I also have a friend named Kevin Hines who uh, tried to jump off the Golden, who jumped off the Golden State Bridge. And he said him and every other survivor, the moment they jumped, they immediately regretted it. So oh. I'm like, Imagine being in that one, that that moment right yeah. there. That's now, right. That's a nightmare. People have issues. They kill themselves. And whenever this happens to like a teammate to one of our vets, I'd say, I'll say, be careful of your call your all your teammates, call them. Because it's the power of suggestion. Because when somebody else does it, and you think your life sucks, you're gonna go, man, my life sucks. Jimmy over there is getting a ton of love right now, and everybody's out having outpouring of love. Well, I want that love too, so I'm gonna do this. And that's why you see kind of groups do it. And that's where it's scary for our kids. And you're afraid to push your kids because something that really wasn't an option when we were growing up, we see constantly yeah. now. And it's, it's only, it's, it's become an option and it should never be an option. Like, again, the things that we are talking about overcoming, thank God we're still here to do a lot of the great things that we've done. I understand that you had a moment where you found out about how much suicide there is with vets. And that, and that you had been working with... Well, it's um, 22 a day. That number's not okay. It's not okay, but you know what? It's, it's not fair to them also, but it's not fair, like, how they get treated when they come back. Like, they should be making all the money, not us. And they're so selfless. Like, they don't know me or my kid or anything. They leave us to go fight for us and just to make us feel comfortable. And yet, you know, we have Sylvester Stallone come in and talk to our group, and he said, look, I made Rambo, or First Blood, just to show like the issues that vets go through coming back from the Vietnam War. And guys are going through the same issues with the VA and when they come out, when they're transitioned. So it's not gotten better with the government, so it's gotta be on you. You've gotta change it. It's gotta come from between your ears and behind your ears and behind your rib cage. So it's so, heartbreaking, staggering, and, and a lot of times I'll say stuff in there in our group to our vets and they get so mad at me. And uh, I'm, I'm just trying to give another, and I'm like, I don't mind if you get pissed, as long as we don't kill ourselves. Like Memorial Day, we have Memorial Day. And the first Memorial Day, I said, uh, what are you guys doing to celebrate Memorial Day this week? <laughs> they got so mad. <laughs> and uh, what? Uh, they get so pissed, we don't celebrate Memorial Day. This is when our brothers got killed. I said, I know, why aren't you celebrating them? And they were like, what? I said, why aren't you celebrating them? I said, listen, when I die, none of y'all are wearing black. Nobody here, you're gonna celebrate my life. You think your brothers are up there happy? If you're sitting there with a loaded gun on Memorial Day or a fifth of or Jack Daniels or something, or, or do you think they'd rather you celebrate them? So let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate our brothers and sisters. And we started taking a hike to get a little closer to brothers and sisters on, you know, on that day. And now our whole group, that's what they view it as. And they started going to the cemetery down here in LA, walking up to people saying, who are you celebrating? And trying to change that perspective. And it could start with one person that just changes the way. And we have a vet named Denver Morris, which really kind of led the charge on this. And a guy named AJ Perez, we're our first two employees. They really led the charge. When we started talking about it differently, they fought back hard. And then they said, wait, you know, it's kind of right. And yeah, why aren't we celebrating them? And I understand why our vets are angry and pissed. And I probably would be too if, if I was in a lot of their positions. Your work with MVP has made a real difference for and for the I folks so. that are in it in, in terms oh. of like how many have succumbed to suicide yeah. that are participating. Can you share kind of what that has looked like? Um, I just know there's a lot who are continuing it who haven't since. So I don't know the number. Um, I don't want to put a number on it, but there's an awful lot. And even if there's one, I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. Some of my best friends in there now are people who we're going to. We have a, a vet named Kirstie Ennis who's now trying to climb Everest, who's amazing. She called for permission one night to let her go. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say yes. Like, we need you and I think you're gonna help more people. She's like, you're not giving me permission. I said, no. And she's, you know how many people she's helped out since? Like, oh my God, she is, that girl's freaking walking here or walking blessing. Like, I'm minuscule in what I do talking about it. She is 
been incredible how many people she's helped out. And that's what you do. Like, you just never know. I have a, a thing in the book, you never know what lies around next Tuesday. And we brought little Logan in on our anniversary one year. Everybody raised their hand and said, Logan, so glad you helped start this. And they gave their story and what they would have done. That I was suicidal and I didn't. I'm so glad that you're still here, that you were able to start this with us. And they went around the room and Logan turned to me and he said, hey, Jay, it's pretty damn cool. <laughs> and I said, and I think he was 14 at the time. I said, I know Logan. I said, man, we, you never know what lies around next Tuesday. I said, who would have thought you getting leukemia would have ended up starting this whole beautiful foundation where we would save lives. And not only would people not commit suicide, but they would go on to do great things and to lift up and empower so many other people. And you never know what lies around next Tuesday. It's really interesting when I think about how much impact one change one person can have on so many people, like yeah. what Logan's life did for you. And b by the way, I say you never know what lies around next Tuesday, because Tuesday, it was a Tuesday when I got that call from my agent like, hey, you could exhale, you got your... You got a job. You got a job, yeah. But go ahead, I'm sorry. That impact, that ripple effect. Yeah, ripple effect, yeah. And And I, I think there's a weird thing about modern life and all the screens where on one level, we're, we're so connected to so many more people. Yeah. It fe it seems like it, we should feel more impactful, and yet I feel no, like we see more people. We're not connected, right? And so it's it's got yeah. this strange inverse effect yeah. in making us actually feel smaller instead of bigger. You don't even know if you're connecting with the person you're talking to. Right. It's scarier. Right. You're walking down dark alleys more than we ever have. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Jay Glazer. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.